Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our second episode of our Captivating Family Life series, where we delve deeper into the lives of extraordinary individuals who proudly carry the mantle of being solo breadwinners. The last time we met, we were inspired by your stories of courage and determination. And in this program, we continue our journey of exploring and understanding more of their journey. Our panelists today are Ms. Anjali Pariag and Ms. Abigail Cutting, who reside in New York, and Ms. Nicola Young, who reside in the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. They're joining us for this conversation. And so we wanna welcome you, we wanna welcome them. I'm Dr. Salisha Pariag, your moderator for today. Being a solo breadwinner comes with a unique set of challenges and triumphs. It requires balancing the responsibilities of work and family, often navigating uncharted waters and unwavering strength and resilience. But amidst the difficulties, we discover stories of love, sacrifice, and the unwavering spirit to provide for those who we hold very dear to us. Join us as we hear from these remarkable women who have defied the odds and shown us that true strength lies within the depths of the human heart. Together, we will explore the strategies they employ to strike a balance, the sacrifices they willingly made, and the joy they find in building a thriving family life. Welcome to our second episode in our Family Life series on Choices Global, Solo Breadwinners. Ladies, welcome to Choices Global today, and thank you for joining us. You know, as we left, we left the last program, beginning a discussion on how you manage. We talked about your personal experiences, but today we want to delve deeper into effective strategies that you have employed. And um, Abigail, I'm going to start with you um, talking about the effective strategies for avoiding unnecessary expenses and focusing on what truly matters. So let's start a discussion, ladies. Thank you very much, Dr. Salisha. Um, effective strategies for avoiding unnecessary expenses while focusing on those things that really matter. I have hardly mm -hmm. met a woman who doesn't like to shop. However, some True. of them might be extravagant shoppers, while some of them might be very moderate in their shopping. But as a solo breadwinner, it's very important for you to understand your role when it comes to shopping. Because many times you have to decide what is necessary and what is not. So in answering the question, one of the, one of the strategies I use to ensure that I do not incur unnecessary debt or unnecessary expenses, I always ask myself the big question, do I need this product? So if I visit the store then and now, if I visit the store, sometimes I may see something that I like or it may be cheap or better word, inexpensive. And I pick, I would pick up that product. And before I get to the checkout point or the cashier, I ask myself, do I need this product? What is it going to replace? Is the item it's going to replace, is that item broken? If the answer is yes, then I take the product. If the answer is no, I just let it go. So that's one of the strategies I use. I always ask myself that big question do i need this product and in that way you can eliminate unnecessary debt and focus only on those things that are important another strategy i use is sticking to the budget and when i say stick to the budget i would add in the phrase not slavishly because sometimes when we stick to the budget slavishly we have deals or opportunities that come our way that if we turn those deals or opportunities down we may never get them for example, let us say that um, in your home, the blender is broken or the stove has gone bad. You do not have the money to purchase or you do not have enough money to purchase it. And for some reason, you heard that Coates has a deal or Singer has a deal and it's for far less than what you would have paid for it if there wasn't a deal. And you decided, okay, I'm going to take this chance and purchase this item. 
I have done that. And why I did that is because apart from you using your resources, I always factor in this big thing called fit. That's how I live most of my life as a solo breadwinner. Yes, I had resources. They weren't enough. And I knew that I couldn't make it using the resources that I have. And I always engage God in the process. And in many and several, and if possible, all occasions, he came true for me. So I am proposing that as a strategy. The little that I had with God and the faith, God came true for me. So sticking to the budget, but not slavishly. Another strategy I use is planning and saving. Why planning? Sometimes I, at that time I had like school age children. And you know, when you have school age children, sometimes they get sick unexpectedly. They might come on with a fever or cold and you may not have the resources to take them to the doctor because sometimes for you to take them to the doctor, you may have to pay a consultation. And of course I have my insurance, but sometimes you have to do a co-payment. So if you save a little, it can avoid you going to the doctor. So you can buy that if it's a cold medicine, whatever it is, you can purchase it over, over the counter. Um, and so I planned and I also save for this emergency. And I, I, I have my son, he is asthmatic and they have times when he gets asthma attack. And because of my insurance that I have, I'm able to take care of that expenses. If I had not planned for that, like ensuring that I sign up for a health insurance and including my children in that insurance, I may not have been able to save in and a lot of unexpected. So having insurance is necessary, but you have to plan for it. Saving, one of the things I did, and I did it very early, a friend introduced me to the credit union. I did most of my saving through the credit union. So when they have anything that came up that was unexpected you have what you call character loans so you can go without a guarantor you get the character loans and you can take care of expenses and apart from that i always had a little in my account my bank account so if i don't want to go to the credit union i can access the money from my bank account so those are just a few of the a few of the steps i would want to share in terms of avoiding unnecessary debt and just focusing on things that are important. What are important? Food, clothing, transportation, your children, education, and bills, those are the important things. So you focus on that, ensure that you have enough to take care of those expenses. Thank you so much. Yeah, those are those are critical um, areas that you've mentioned, Abigail. And you know, what, what was pronounced in what you said is really is discipline, planning and faith those were three um components that were brought out in your um in your discourse there in your discussion because if you don't have the discipline to put back an item you can get yourself involved in an un unexpected unnecessary um expense that can put pressure on other um sources of income but as we talked of talk about um unnecessary expense and you did mention a little bit about savings um angeli could you guide us on some strategies that you had maybe employed in paying off debt and maybe you can mention something about investment because while we want to keep our debts down we also want to be um proactive for the for future planning. And so can you talk to us as a solo breadwinner on some of the strategies of paying off debt and maybe investing as well? Thank you, Dr. Salisha. Debt is a positive economic tool, financial tool that we can use to benefit us, but debt should be incurred towards acquiring assets or more asset-based long-term um, equity-bearing um, products, so to speak. What you would like to do is keep very focused, plan your debt, servicing your debt in a way that you look first at your high interest bearing loans and deal with those first. If mm -hmm. there is a time or look at your credit lines as well. If you're able to access a facility with a lower interest rate, you can borrow on that and pay off the bigger one first, avoiding or saving yourself the higher interest rate. But in all the circumstances, you must be very focused on 
not attracting any fees, not attracting any um, unnecessary interest that you can avoid. And what, what do I mean by that? There is some credit facility where you, let's, let's go back to purchasing a cell phone because all of us, we use cell phones and now they're pretty expensive. Some credit facility, the, phone, the company says you can pay down, you can pay this off in six months, no interest. You can pay it in 24 months, no interest. You can pay it in 36 months, no interest. If there's no interest, go with the 36 months because your payment is going to be lower. Your cash flow is going to be better. This is what I mean. I have $5 here. I pay $1 towards the phone or half a dollar um, prorating my whole salary towards the phone as against paying $2 every month. Okay? It's just stretched out for a longer period of time. But you have to understand not to incur three or four of those where you stretch yourself too much. So leveraging the credit facility that you have, um, pay down high interest rate. And one of the technical things um, I noticed that we can do at our banks is where we have a credit facility and like in our credit card, we may have a 10,000 or 20,000 people got 30, 40, $50,000. You can convert some of that into cash that automatically becomes cash that you can actually spend on, let's say, a startup of a business while you pay it off in monthly increments. Watch the interest rate. You want to go lower interest rate. You want to borrow on things that are low zero and pay off at the time where you don't attract. Some, some um, facilities, they say you can borrow up to six months, no interest. You want to pay off that one in six months. So and in, with everything, discipline must pay off at the time that they ask you to pay off and when you stretch it when you write down how you service in your debt it becomes easier for you to watch your cash flow and live comfortably and those are you know the advice there about paying off you must be aware of what you owe what you have available what you owe what you have available to invest and while we encourage you as um, angeli mentioned sometimes incurring debt not for cons not to consume it but to place it into an asset into an asset that can maybe bring an income back to you mm -hmm. so for example you use your car or you use a vehicle or to to get to work that is investing in an asset that brings in and it brings in an income so those are critical things even as a solo breadwinner it's important that you understand the debt you have and what you are constantly um, incurring. Um, Nicole, I'm going to come to you about saving. I know the last program we talked about it a little bit, but could you could you say what are the what, why is it essential for families on a single income to have a savings plan and also an emergency fund? Sure. Hello. Good afternoon again. No, you know, emergency fund and saving fund, they they are both separate. Let, let me start there. They are both separate and should not be piled together because some people make the mistake of thinking that their saving funds is also an emergency fund. Emergency fund, fund yes. When it's not, it's yes. two. It's, it's not. two completely right. different funds. Um, Correct. Yeah. One, this your saving funds is more long term. Mm -hmm. as against the emergency fund which is short term now let's come let, let's break it up now your saving funds is you you put into that you know you have um it's consistent and prolonged and you mm -hmm. could put a little bit into that every month it could be your saving funds could be for vacations it could be because you have an ultimate goal let's say you probably want to buy a house you probably want to buy a car you probably want to buy something and you can use your saving funds to doing that especially when it comes to if you have to make down payments um because uh, um angeli mentioned about paying off short term and how you incur your debts and stuff like that now even in if you have to buy a house or you have to buy a car you make more down payment you have a lower um monthly installment to make so your savings funds could come into that and it plays an extremely um, great role. Now your emergency fund, which is more short term, because we have like the emergency fund is for like if you have probably your car, the car break down, you have to make a a repair, and you're not able to wait on the insurance company, or there's something in the house that needs fixing, and you need to do it 
right away you can access that fund some um somebody get if some family member gets sick and you have to access that you get it um you can do it right away case in point recently my daughter had um a medical issue of course you know she special needs and she had um a, mess, a medical issue just developed out out of, i call it out of the blues because there was no prior symptoms related to it or anything she was fine and it just showed up and I took her to the emergency room, but there's a procedure she had to do the MRI. And um, with the MRI, they have to put her to sleep and all of this. Now, the waiting list for that is long, even though it's an emergency. I tried to outside to get the MRI. What happened? Because the fact that she has to go to sleep, a lot of the private entities really don't want to do it. So you have to come back to the hospital system. And what happens is that even though it was the emergency fund may not have covered would not have had covered the entire funding would i have done it through the private entity if i had to take her into the hospital itself which would have been a little bit more even if i bank in on the savings funds where sometimes you can use the savings funds to assist the emergency fund but not all together it would have still be astronomically high so you still have I still have to end up waiting on whenever they are ready to do the MRI. But what I'm saying is that the emergency fund is extremely important. But when it comes to using the emergency fund as well, even when you use the emergency fund or you use your saving fund, one of the problems that we experience is paying back into those funds. Because remember, whether you're working monthly or um, your salary is a monthly salary or a weekly or a fortnightly, sometimes that extra that you would have used to place into your emergency fund or into your um, saving funds that build it up a little quicker in the beginning may not necessarily be there my advice and my plan to my own self and what i do for myself is this you put a small amount even if it's your bare minimum amount in back into those funds every month so it would build up until you may have extra somewhere that you could put back into that. Um, with, mm. Wherever you are, depending on what the currency is. If your bare minimum is $100 and that's all you can scrape out from your salary for the week or for, <laughs> for, the, for the fortnight or for the month, you split it in half and you put half in your saving funds, half in your emergency funds. In that, in that yeah. way, both funds are being serviced at the same time. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's, you still have it available if if mm -hmm. needs be, if something else comes up. Because remember, in emergency, you may not need it all the time. Eh? And yeah, um, correct, maybe correct. easier in that way because you're saving on um, a long term basis. And you're saving funds, you're saving funds too, because you don't mm -hmm. know how long, you, whatever you plan for. If it's a year you plan to save for, or two years or six months, depending on what you want, you will know how long gotcha. to yeah. save. Makes sense. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you know, it's yeah. those are critical things. It goes back to discipline. And whether you are a single parent, whether you're a single person, whether you're a married person, but there's still only one income coming into the home as a solo breadwinners, as we're discussing today, um, it's critical to be disciplined and to be a deliberate about savings and, and investing. Um, all three ladies, you all have children, and I want to just ask you, maybe in two minutes or, or maybe a minute, talk about how you involve your children in age-appropriate discussions about budgeting and financial responsibility. Angeli, we can start okay. with you. Just about one minute. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> financial literacy from infancy to adulthood, I believe, starts in the home and ends mm -hmm. right there in the home. It begins with counting. Ask the child the first one they put down, you put a dollar sign in front of it, you put a point zero zero, that's a dollar. You just introduce decimal <laughs> points to them with two spaces in the back. We're unaware. <laughs> and this is how you build your child math skill without even them stepping foot into a classroom. Counting, problem solving, understanding denominations, the ones from the fives and the tenth, when they have to write it down which column it goes in. So straight away, they move from the singles to the tens to the hundreds, and they already have it in their head before they go to school and learn that. You, you also have adding, 
order of adding how to multiply we're not going to add one thing three times we're going to multiply by three and then they learn the little math facts as they go along when they get a little bigger you go to the bank involve them in filling up the deposit slip and the withdrawal slip as the time um comes along when, it, when it's time for your atm let them do the key and they, they know they, they'll be able to do it of course they like to pull that little slip out to see how much you have at that time you intercept your slip because you don't want too much out there um balance your spending on budget and let them sit down um it was only the other day we went out and i told my daughter like write all the things that we bought today she has a little journal because uh, quite a few of those things we spent cash so there's no tracking and sometimes you need to remember what you have that really lends the accountability with them in the home and ultimately respond a financial responsibility include them um, in budgeting and financial responsibility if I should add up to the conversation, um, yes. I, only the other night I had, I was having a conversation with my with my children. We were talking about um, the hardship we endure, the hardship we experience, and how mm -hmm. um, and how we navigated it, and how we came out successfully. And we had a talk about um, we were sharing it because my grandson was there. We want him to appreciate what he's having now and not and um, we were talking about the struggle and if you value the struggle and this once you value the struggle and you learn from your struggle then it's difficult for you to go back or your your future generation to go back to that place and i remember us talking about um at that time as a solo breadwinner we one bread we could have afforded one bread for two meals so the bread we cut it in half one for breakfast, the half for breakfast and the half for dinner. And I remember we, make, we, we made a laugh of it because my daughter was talking about the situ cheese. And um, then we started talking about what came out of that is that my son said, um, because of those hard lessons, they have learned how to budget, how to, um, they have learned how to handle finances. And Building on that, what happens whenever there is something to be purchased, my son or my daughter, we sit and they would put me to sit and they'll say, mom, this is how you can save money. This thing costs $15,000. It has less, for example, I want to purchase a computer. He said, look at this one. It costs $15,000. This is the amount of gigabytes it has. These are some of the features it has and it's $15,000. Let's look at this other one. This one costs $15,000, but look at the host of other um, features that it has. So I am proud to say that because of our experience of them seeing how I had to budget and navigate the little that I had, they were able to learn those valuable lessons of how to treat with their finances, how to prioritize those um, things that they need. And even now he's into uh, technology and I looked at some, and, uh, what you call that gadget he has there on this gadget he has you can charge your apple phone you can charge your ipod you can charge your phone your phone your ipod and your watch and he was showing me the logistics buying that as against buying something as we have to get three different chargers it's more efficient it's less costly so I want to say that they have learned and I was able to teach them through just practical things. Even when I send them to the shop, I would ask them, how much did it cost? If you had purchased this one, how much would it have cost you? Which one was cheaper? Which one is better? And in those little ways, you're able to teach them how to manage their finances and how to budget and how to be efficient and prudent with their monies. Thanks. Being financially responsible um, yeah. with, with what they now have as young adults. Um, I know, Nicola, you have a young, a young teen or a preteen. How do you include him in the financial discussions? What I do, I, I, have, I ask him to prioritize. You see, he's into mm -hmm. sports, music, these things. So what I do, mm -hmm. now each of these things cost me right um because yeah. of course you know Trinidad is big on culture so when you yeah. when you have to pay for these things music sports and stuff like that it comes yeah, up correct you have to your time so what i do is yes. have him prioritize 
So mm -hmm. he wants to play tennis, he wants to swim, he wants to play football, he wants to play basketball. Okay, son, tell me which ones come in order of your priority. You want to play the band, you want to play the keyboard, which is your priority? And based on that, what we do is take the first two from, or the first one from each, making it two, and we do that. So as you gain experience in that, you complete that course or you complete that session, then we can do the others. So he's involved in the um, decision making. So it doesn't look like I am making the decision, and it doesn't it doesn't please him. So that everybody is happy. He's still able to do what he what he likes, and um, be able to enjoy it even on a single income income budget. Even when we go to the uh, supermarket, and he you know sometimes they want to ask for everything they see in the supermarket. <laughs> so I said to him, okay, you walk around the supermarket. And they are products that are the same. And he likes to use the word best price. I guess he learns it, learned it at school or something when they were doing um, profit and loss or something like that. I can't remember what the subject was. So I said, well, you go, you walk around, see the best price and determine if you really need it. And then we will determine if we buy it or not. Because if we would have already bought um, in bulk, and you need this, this something extra because he likes to cook. And you need something extra. Let's see it at the best price so that we could still work in, in the small little budget that we have left left back to take us into or through the, the, the rest of the month. So I get him involved again in the decision making. You make the decisions with me and we will determine even if we can do it. Because even though he's involved in the decision making, there's sometimes that I still say, no, we can't do this. Not today, not this month. We will examine, examine it in the new month or something. But being a part of the decision making has really helped. At least I have seen it assist so that he sometimes would make his calculation. Um, I heard Abby mention about having something at one price and ex examining the specs and then determining based on the features or based on what it is, which is more. And I have seen him without even telling him to do that. I have seen him say to me, mommy, we could buy this thing, but if we look at this one and you check this one, this one has more features or this one has a better, um, it would work better because of X, Y, Z, without me even thinking about that because he is more into technology than I am. So, you know, and it works, it works. And I've seen them grow, I mean, we yeah, underestimate a lot of times. Yeah. We underestimate Correct. a lot of times what happens what happens when they're involved in the decision making. But later down mm -hmm. in life, it will benefit them when they have to make those decisions for themselves. Correct. And you know, listening to you ladies, um Abigail, you you have um you have young adults um Angeli has a teen, um Nicola has a teen, but we've seen the benefits of how um, involving the children in, in the decision-making process, how it's now benefited you, Abigail, with your young young adults. Yeah. <laughs> and we see the teenagers, how they're coming up. And, you know, parents, yeah. don't be shy in including your children. Don't let them be part of it yeah. because they're being taught at school. And sometimes just having them as part of the conversation helps you make better decisions because exactly. they are learning so much from um from all of that we'd like to talk a little bit but i know we're running out of time but um maybe in another future program we're going to talk about investing for our future and and all of those things but um as we conclude um today's program examining the journey of um the solo breadwinner you know viewers we are left with a profound appreciation i know i am for the strength and resilience displayed by these remarkable women, their unwavering commitment to their families and their determination to overcome challenges. Um, they have left for me as well. I know I have been um, left with an indelible mark on how they navigated life, how they navigated and still working through issues, but they are living successful lives, successful lives, according to their terms. 
and their children are now benefiting. We see Abigail, young adults who she's got a lawyer in her family. She's got those in university involved in technology. So many things happening, but we're seeing that these young people are better by including them, by encouraging them. And we want to thank you, um, our panelists, for being part of Choices Global and being part of our Family Life series discussing the solo breadwinner. And to our audience, thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey in our Family Life series. And as we continue to explore diverse perspectives and stories, join us every two weeks this will be aired august 12th august this is august 26th join us again the second week in september for another profound program as we discuss life discuss what's happening in our world and remember always be kind have a blessed day